Is this Mr. Branvold? Uh, this is the one and only greatest villain in podcast history. <laughs> uh oh, I hear someone in the background. Who could that be? Is that is that is that Ralph at a glory hole? <laughs> Rob, I'm peeing sitting down. Give me a second. I knew you peed sitting down. Jesus. I knew that photo was at a glory hole. <laughs> I think we already know who won. <laughs> oh, come on. Don't 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 say I won that fast. Give me a little time. All right. Well, no, no, no chance you won. <laughs> hey, Michael. Michael. Yes. Yeah. Saying that little glory hole thing didn't upset me at all. What <laughs> pissed me off is you had to add Vinnie Vincent to that. I knew that would set you off. <laughs> Dude, right off the bat, I love it. I love it. <laughs> I I knew the buttons to push. Yeah, exactly, man. Well, I'll tell you what. We're going to let the fans decide. Who, <laughs> who cares what the fans think? They don't know what they want. Well, my fans do. And that's no. what oh. all that matters, Mr. Bradvold. Yeah. <laughs> so if you haven't uh, guessed it yet, what were you going to say, Ralph? Go ahead. Make your uh, comeback. Well, you got fans, I got fans, but Mike ain't got shit. Yeah, exactly. I've got I've got more total fans. Oh, you got oh. Ralph, you Ralph loves to live in just YouTube world, and there's a whole bigger world than just YouTube. That's right. A, 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 a world that I don't go to, because if I did, I'd wipe your on the floor over there, too. Oh! Well, you guys know why I got you both on, right? Because we're the kings of podcasting. Correct. So I could win over some of your fans. I'm just using exactly. you guys. Hey, Ralph. <laughs> How sad is that? Bob is he the fu- guy that fucked fucked got over. me to do podcasts. Huh? He fucked us over. How? Of course I did. By you... getting us to come on his show, and now he's going to get all of our fans. You God think, damn it. You think Yo, I you actually know... respected you because of your KISS knowledge, Mr. Brandon? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'm going to tell you something. You know, where, you know where Bob got that idea when you had me on your show. Oh, really? Yeah, and, and then I had to fire you because your your ratings went down. Fired, fired me, my ass. You didn't fire. <laughs> How the fuck can you fire somebody that's not even part of your show? <laughs> I don't know, but it sure pissed off the fans, didn't it? Uh, yeah, my fans. <laughs> I love it, man. We're gonna keep going. No agenda here, man. Just keep it going. Are we already on? Or we're on, doing... dude. We're going, okay. man. Wow, full wow. blast. Right. <laughs> right on. So before we start, uh, Ralph said. Uh, Michael, to uh, have a lot of tissues ready because yes. you'll be needing them for this episode. As 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 Mark Cicchini likes to say, is this going to be a five five tissue episode? <laughs> I don't know. Will it, Ralph? We'll <laughs> we'll soon find out. <laughs> well, Michael is a masochist. The the, the way I'm going to wipe him all around the floor and make fun of him, he'll he'll be he'll be masturbating. <laughs> oh. Well, what I've you set up so for you guys, yourself, Ralph. Just in case either of you get offended, I've just hit the escape button on your computer and that will send you into a virtual safe space where you could be on your own, use your tissues and cry and then come back whenever you're ready. You're going to send us to send us to the corner. Yes, I will. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Time out, guys. Time out. (laughs) Guys, act like goddamn children, but I fucking love it. (laughs) So for those who haven't realized yet, we've got the uh, self-proclaimed podcasting masters on this episode of the shockwave school sessions of course michael brandvold from three sides of the coin and michael brandvold marketing you also got a music business podcast that you do correct there michael yeah the music biz weekly great podcast i think you've been on it haven't i you? have i've been on both <laughs> your podcasts because of why course, it's so great you want the big rating, so it, it makes sense to have me on as a guest. Exactly. <laughs> and of course, your guests on are your your co host. I guess you could call him co host on the three sides of the coin. Uh, as you said, Mark, uh, how do you say his name? Chasinski? Chikini. 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 That's right. And, and Tommy, Tommy Summers. Summers. That's right. And Lisa Martini. Lisa, I haven't met Lisa Martini. Yeah, she, on... she, we call her the weather girl because she's not on every episode. So who is this guy, Izzy, that you keep referring to on your show? <laughs> I don't know. You tell me who's Izzy. I Trust have... me, you don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> well, that'll be a mystery for people to find out. Uh, he's, got a pod, he's got his own podcast, but nobody listens to it. I know, right? <laughs> well, I might have to. I, I hear he's got, he, he does pretty well with the women, according to your podcast, huh? No answer. 
<laughs> he does love pasta from 7-Eleven, though. That was the whole thing, the pasta from 7-Eleven. I never got that. Supposedly the best pasta around, right? Better than any Italian restaurant. Yeah, as, as, as he's telling Mark Cicchini, born and bred Italian, that, <laughs> you know, this is the better than homemade pasta. And Mark is like, you're full of shit. <laughs> Nothing at 7-Eleven is good, except maybe a Slurpee. They used so to be I, good. I, I also want to say, and you know, just to give them a plug, if you're suffering from insomnia, check out the Izzy Presley podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Izzy Presley, I'm going right to that. I think, yeah. it's, I'm called, I think it. it's called Another Fucking Podcast. Ooh. Oh, God. What, what a genius. Coming from Dr. Fuck. Dr. <laughs> Fuck. That's right. Ralph Vieira, a.k.a. Dr. Fuck, on his... Yes. Popular, very popular YouTube channel, Almost Human. Also, does uh, you do the Vieira Vault podcast, the rock and metal combat podcast, and of course, uh, guitarist songwriter for Thrash or Die. Correct, there, yes. Ralph. Well, Who, well, not not the guitarist. I I am the the singer. Uh, and yeah, the angelic vocalist. Oh, I thought you played guitar too, sang and guitar. No, I I play a little guitar, but not not in the band. Ah, well, I should know that because. Thrash or Die is going to be providing the soundtrack to the upcoming movie. Here comes the plug, boys and girls. Inside Metal Bay Area Godfathers. Were you aware of this, uh, Michael Branville, that your buddy yeah, Ralph yes, is doing? Yes, the... I was. Yes, yes I was. I, I think you had mentioned that to me in passing. Yeah. I think yeah. you were trying to impress me, and I was like, yeah, okay, whatever. <laughs> yeah, he, he, just got, he just got him jealous, man. <laughs> hey, I, I do want to thank you, man, because I, I finally saw the, the the promo, the commercial for it. Right. And Jesus, Metallica, Testament, all these big, big names. And I hear street trash underneath it. I'm like, oh, yes. This is I mean, you don't you have no idea how amazing that is. Well, that's to awesome. Me. You know, it's like I'm, I'm honored. And, you know, I purchased all your DVDs, all your inside metal. I purchased them all. I have them all. Yes, you did, and I appreciate that. And what better band than Thrash or Die to represent the early Bay Area's thrash scene? Because you definitely have that sound. And, you know, of course, being, uh, you know, doing movies, and you probably know about the uh, licensing and publishing, Michael. It costs a lot to get the original music for the score. So, you know, we do what's what's next best. We talk to our buddy Dr. Fuck to provide the music, and there you go. And he provided oh, yeah. you like a cheap copycat version of the great music. Exactly. Right. Well, no, I mean, no. I mean, he provided <laughs> the best music ever. Right, Ralph? Well, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's awesome. Hey, Michael, when are you going to form your, your, your Kiss tribute band to, to, to Unmasked? To Unmasked? Yeah, you can do all Unmasked live. Oh. Why? That, I don't like that album. Who cares? Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Michael Branville doesn't like a Kiss album? I thought, right. I thought everything of them I don't like. I thought everything Gene Simmons does is gold. Oh God, no! No, wow. Okay, we're getting a different side of Mister Branville. Maybe the fourth side of the coin here. He doesn't think Gene's going to hear it, but I'm sending him a link. <laughs> there goes your checks. Hey, he's got my Skype connection tapped all the time. Does he? Whoa. Yeah. Why? <laughs> how uh, how else does he know what he's paying for? Oh, that's, that's true. I heard Eddie Trunk also has your Skype connection tapped. Is that true, Michael? I don't know. Who cares about that? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Jesus Christ. I don't know. I don't know where to begin here, people. Uh, you know what? I, I was going to do a little... Uh, contest thing at the end or a little uh, a questionnaire for the two of you but fuck it we're gonna just start right off the bat with it to uh, have people be the deciding factor of who is the real deal who is the fraud who is number one who is kingpin of the podcasting who is the real true kiss fan here we will obviously well, isn't me well ralph <laughs> isn't gonna win that last one <laughs> what the kiss well, fan part hey right. as i said the shockwave skull sessions listeners will decide so all you people listening in you email me your decision at shockwave skull sessions at gmail.com you ready boys and girls you got the tissues out mr Brandvold? Sure. let's do it <laughs> I, I i i i agree there's no way i can win 
uh, better Kiss fan than Michael because every week he's got a Kiss podcast. I believe your next episode is who's got the longest nose hairs. In, uh, <laughs> actually, the Kiss, right? actually, you two will like this. I just confirmed tomorrow joining us on Three Sides of the Coin is none other than Mitch Lafon. John oh. Zazula. Oh, yeah. you fucker. Awesome. You, you beat me to it. I'm setting up a podcast with him. We were supposed to set it up earlier, but I'm trying to set up a shockwave skull session. As you know, that's a discussion style. So I'm trying to get uh, like a Frankie Benali or not Frankie Benali. What am I saying? Uh, Frankie from Anthrax, uh, Frank Bello, or uh, even a Charlie Bonate uh, to uh, come on with him. Someone that to grew up with him in New York to, uh, actually kind of co-host with me like we did with uh, myself and John Gallagher and Bob Daisley on the last podcast. So I'm trying to set up a third guest for that. But if, if I don't, we'll just do a, just do a, a, a Johnny and myself. But uh, yeah, Johnny is awesome. I can't wait to hear. Is that, is that posted yet, Michael? This podcast? No, no, we're, we're recording it tomorrow. Okay. So yeah, I guess you will beat me to it then. We, we, we will be talking about his new book and book. signing Ace Fraley when he was not a Kiss fan. Wasn't that Eddie Trunk? I hand it to Michael. I gotta hand it to Michael <laughs> and and you, Bob. I mean, you guys get good guests. I mean, all we can get are losers like Michael Brandle on my <laughs> exactly. podcast. Exactly. <laughs> but you still get the best we, ratings, right there, Ralph? At least yes, on YouTube. <laughs> uh, yeah, on YouTube, I, I bury him. I don't know. I don't know the, this other stuff he's on. I, I I don't care. You know, I rain on YouTube. And by the way, I already forfeited, and now Michael can say he's the biggest Kiss podcast thing because. I, I changed my channel because um, I'm not only Kiss anymore, and it's worked like a charm because there you uh, go. I lost I lost 150 people that just want to hear me talk about Kiss, and I've gained over 300. So there you go. Well, there you go, but, Michael. But but I can't I can't be against Michael anymore because I don't talk just Kiss like he does. Well, I, actually, that's not true. Michael is talking Molly Hatchet these days, isn't that right, no, Michael? Yeah, well, I been, went on. I went on Ralph's show to talk Molly Hatchet. Okay, yeah. well, maybe we'll bring up some Molly Hatchet here. And and and, and Ralph, <laughs> boy, did we, boy, did we drive Ian crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so is is I I think I believe Molly Hatchet was one of the first bands to call themselves Molly Hatchet with no original members prior to Foreigners. Is this correct? Uh, uh probably, probably you're so. right. I think yeah. the manager owned the name, right? And he the just, manager, the manager is my understanding. The manager always owned the name to Molly Hatchet, even when it was all the original members. Right, correct. See, band versus brand. Watch that DVD, right? Michael Brandfold, oh, who God, had yeah. me on as a guest. Don't, don't, don't give your manager sole ownership and access to everything. Don't give anyone sole access to the name, especially these days. Oh, Damn, God. I gave I gave all my uh, uh, all of it to Michael Branvold. <laughs> That's all right. I'll steal it from him. He says it's only yeah. worth about two I, cents. I, I'm going to be st- I'm going to be forming a Kiss tribute band playing unmasked under the name Thrash or Die. Yeah, oh. yeah. And and now he's going to charge you, <laughs> Bob, for for being on that DVD. <laughs> Don't right. worry. I, I I broke out I broke out my piggy bank. I think I'll be able to afford those songs. <laughs> All right, good. <laughs> All right, let's start with the first question here. Both of you, you are trapped on a desert island for one year. You can have only one album to listen to. One oh out of these three albums. The okay. debut Vinnie Vincent record from 1986. Oh, the God. debut White Tiger record oh, from 1986. Oh, or Gene Simmons asshole. It's going to be an awfully quiet island. <laughs> <laughs> There's going to be a lot of peaceful meditation going on. Yeah. Good yeah, answer. The soundtrack Mr. there are going to be waves. What about you, Mr. Vieira, uh, Dr. Fuck? Um, I like. I like um, No Substitute, so I guess I'll take that album and just play one song. Uh, the Vinnie Vincent album. Oh, but I like one, one we song knew album. you always had it for Vinny. There we it is. It. <laughs> there I, I, like, is. I like that song, I do. And I've always said that, uh, and unlike what Michael thinks, I've always said Vinnie Vincent saved Kiss. <laughs> Wasn't that one of the questions you asked me, Michael, on your podcast? Yep. Yes. Yep. Oh, I think I asked it before. I asked you guys before you asked me without even knowing. <laughs> That's true. You spun it back on us. This is correct. All, all I know is, Bob, you nailed it on the head when you said Kiss fans are stupid. 
<laughs> and I and, will and repeat know, that and we, too. And we know who's the biggest Kiss fan between me and Michael, so you make even more sense now. Well, we'll see on this next question how Mr. Brambold answers this. Who has the better dance moves, Paula Abdul or Paul Stanley? Michael? The better dance moves? Right. I, I got to go with Paula Abdul. Oh, all right. What about you, Ralph? Yeah, I, I go with Paul Abdul. Uh, Paul Stanley has to be the most annoying front man in the history of all rock. Oh, oh, oh. Kiss fans are going to love this. <laughs> oh, I've said it on my, I don't care, man, who I fan. I think everybody's like, Paul Stanley's the greatest front man. You know, wait, you know what? Let me rephrase that. You know, as far as his dancing around, it doesn't really bother me, but, you know, I'll take Paul do because she got that ass. There you but, go. But, but Paul Stanley, when he talks between songs, he's hands down the worst. <laughs> Eric may look like a boy, but he's built like a man. <laughs> What do you, Come on, you, didn't, you, didn't, you didn't love his stage raps in the 80s about Michael Jackson? Oh, my God. That was the worst one. And I, and I discovered that, Michael, not, not too long ago, like maybe a year ago. I never knew about that one. Oh, refresh us. Doll. Refresh us on this, please. He's I like, haven't heard. Hey, hey, Paul, kiss rules. How, how was it? I forgot. It was oh, so God. bad. I, I was going to say between that one and, and his love gun, and maybe, it, maybe he did use Michael Jackson for a love gun stage rap but his love gun stage raps during the 80s were just and and security at the airport and she put her hand down my pants and she pulled yeah. out and i'm just like oh, jesus she went so, down on my 501s and went yeah exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it was so bad in the stage rap <laughs> i don't think he'll be saying that stage rap on this uh, current tour no no no, because kids are the there now. Stuff. There's kids, yeah. There's Shoot. kids. Absolutely. All right. Number three, Kiss Meets the Phantom of the Park, the 1978 movie, or the 1925 classic Phantom of the Opera with Lon Chaney. Mr. Brandon. Phantom of the Park by Kiss. Oh. It's so bad, it's great. I didn't know that until fairly recently. That was Hanna-Barbera that yep. did that. No wonder they went out of business. <laughs> Shortly after that, uh, it was say. so bad it became a great cult movie. Well, I will agree with you there. I will agree with you. What do you say, Doctor Fuck? Well, I've never seen, uh, unfortunately, uh, Phantom of the Opera. The I've original, never, seen, never seen that. Wow. No, but so. I will. I will say about Kiss Meets the Phantom when that was aired back. Wasn't it Halloween in seventy eight or something like that? Something, something like that. Yeah. So, yeah. And Imagine I was at my mountain. friend's house, and we were the biggest Kiss nerds. I mean, my 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 room was plastered with Kiss posters. And I went to my friend's house. We went in his living room to watch it. While in his bedroom, he set up a little recorder to, to record the the audio of it. And when the movie was over, my dad picked me up, and I was driving home. And I'm I'm 13, something like that. And I'm thinking to myself, man, that wasn't good. That that really <laughs> sucked. I thought it was terrible, but. Then they rebroadcast it on CBS at 11 at night, like in 84 or something. And I recorded it on VCR. And I absolutely adore that movie for all the wrong reasons. <laughs> uh, it is so horrible. It's great. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Gene Simmons as the lion. <laughs> oh. Listen, <laughs> listen, any movie like that that was billed, was, was hyped as, Star Wars meets Kiss. Uh, Star Wars meets Hard Day's Night is how they told them. Was that yeah. was that what they said? Star yeah, Wars. Yeah. Meets, oh. Okay, that's with how Kiss, Bill Aquine sold with, it with, to with Kiss in it. It's like, oh my, and and then this is what you end up with. It's like I think we were recently talking about this on Three Sides because um, Mark Cicchini was sort of like Ralph when he saw it. He was like, uh, uh-uh, uh, I don't get this. This is bad. And and I was just like, you know, when you've got Hanna Barbera making your movie, it ain't gonna be like Star Wars. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Come on, you just look at what Hanna Barbera does. And I got nothing against Hanna Barbera as a kid. I love that stuff. Oh yeah, but so did I. it ain't Star Wars, and it will <laughs> never be Star Wars. It wasn't uh, Ace Frehley just wasted off his ass during that whole filming. There, there's a stunt double for Ace. That's Frehley. right. That's a black guy. A black guy. guy, yeah, I heard about that. That's right. <laughs> and yeah, and that throughout the whole movie, Peter's voice had to be dubbed in by somebody else. 
<laughs> yeah, because <laughs> when he talked, they couldn't understand what he was saying. So that's not even Peter talking in the movie. Jesus, how bad could it get? And he originally talked, but it was so bad they had to bring somebody in to voice over him. Jesus. <laughs> and did you say uh, you recently saw that uh, Banana Splits movie, right? Uh, I think I yeah. saw on their face. Yeah, I saw, Is uh, that the, out? The Banana Splits horror movie. The horror movie. Now, did Hanna Barbera actually do that movie, or are they dead? I don't even um, know. I think Hanna Barbera got bought or sold the rights to everything to like Warner Brothers or something ah. like that. So whoever owns the rights now did it. Well, a brief, uh, a brief review of the movie there without giving too much away. It's, uh, so it's, it's the banana splits in 2019 and it's a horror movie. And when I mean horror movie, it is not kid friendly. It is really gory. It is not the lovable banana splits you would have grown up with. But, again, it was so freaking bad, I loved it. <laughs> I got to see that. I'm actually kind of can, curious to see that one. Can I plug a, a recent movie I saw that was so terrible that I'm dying to see it again? <laughs> Please do. Oh, my God. There's a movie. Oh, what was the name of it? Uh, the Fanatic with John Travolta. Oh, I haven't uh, seen that, but I heard it was horrible. I, it was yeah. so bad. It was terrible, but terrible like Kiss Meets the Phantom. Right. I, it was so bad, I, I got to see it again. It made no sense whatsoever. The way it ended was just so bizarrely stupid that I, I highly suggest everybody at least watch it knowing it's going to be a terrible movie. And look at the plot twist at the end. It is the most ridiculous, non-believable thing you'll ever see in your life. I, I think I saw it on Amazon Prime, and I think I actually bookmarked it. So I'm I'm going to uh, watch it. Have waste two seen, hours to watch it. Have you ever seen Tropic Thunder? I did. I actually oh, thought yeah, it was pretty humorous that. when I. You know, again, the, it was so Sim bad. You know, Simple Jack in that movie. I don't uh, recall. Simple Jack was uh, the well, Ben Stiller played like Simple Jack. You know, he was a movie star and he did a movie called Simple Jack. Okay, and. Uh, what do you call? That's where they got the line. Don't don't ever go full full retard. Uh, uh, what's his name? Um, Robert Downey Jr. Well, anyway, Michael. Um, I almost called him. I almost called John Travolta Michael Branville. <laughs> <laughs> Michael uh, John Travolta plays this, uh, uh, trying to play a simple, uh, serious character, but he comes off like Simple Jack. It's so bad, you know. So He's yeah, check that out. Really took in this shit lately. He must be desperate for money. Taking these horrible roles. Oh yeah, yeah. Jesus. And Fred Durst. Uh, it's a Fred Durst. Oh, movie. that's oh, right. God. That's why I booked. But yeah, because Fred Durst directed it or something, right? I I believe so. I think no. I think the beginning said a Fred Durst film. Okay. So I'm not sure if he directed it. Wow. Might have. He must be a Scientologist. I take it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably because John Travolta's one. All right. Well, speaking of movies, which movie? Stoned Age or? Detroit Rock City. Go ahead, Michael. Um, you know, I got to say, I don't remember Stoned Age, so I got to uh -huh. go Detroit Rock City. But, you know, Detroit Rock City, I don't know what it is about Kiss movies. They're so bad, they're good. I'll agree with you on that point. <laughs> <laughs> what uh, about you, I, Ralph? You, I did see Stoned Age, but it has Tommy Chong, right? Is he in the movie? No, no, no. This is the one where they... They uh, go to a party in Palace Verdes. Uh, it's not not big actors, but it's based in the seventies. Uh, but I think it came out in the nineties. It was kind of like a um, Days and Confused. But the whole premise is they go to these. Uh, they take these to meet these two hot chicks who lived in Palace Verdes, or at least one hot chick that had this house party. And then uh, they go to all these different parties and they just fuck around <laughs> this whole night, uh, getting stoned and drinking. Great movie if you haven't seen it. Oh, a, lo a lot of metal references in there about like Scorpion's Virgin Killer album, Richie Blackmore, and a good soundtrack by Montrose as well. A lot of BOC footage too. They actually have wow. uh, footage from the BOC. Yeah, you guys got to, if you haven't seen that oh, movie, you yeah, got to no, check no, it out. Now I check it out. Yeah, With absolutely. you describing it, I know I didn't see it because I'm a big BOC fan. Oh, yeah. They're like the whole, uh, the whole point of the movie is one of the guys, one of the stoner guys got lasered in the eye from a BOC concert. And it <laughs> fucked up his head the whole time. Which, so. which really happened in real life. That's what know? I heard. It was kind of, didn't they have like a lawsuit about that? 
yeah, many yeah. years ago. I, I believe the guy guy got blinded in one eye. Yeah, that's that's actually a true story. I re- I do recall that. Yeah, uh, I love Detroit Rock City. I, I don't think it's as stupid and bad as uh, uh, Kiss Meets the Phantom, but yeah, it, it has some stupid parts, but. I really did enjoy it. I went to the theater to see it, and there was like two other people in that. I piece. was going to say, I, re- I remember when it came out. <laughs> there was, I went to the yeah. theater here, and there was probably five people in the theater, and I'm like, oh, Me as well. <laughs> this is a bomb. Yeah. <laughs> well, they had a pretty good soundtrack as well, I will say. They had a great, yeah, soundtrack. great soundtrack. Yeah, yeah. Cheap Trick was on it. Yeah. And Thin Lizzy, Lights the Out. Sweet. Sure. Yeah, sweet, yeah. yeah. Uh, so stuff. was obviously the Days and Confused soundtrack. That actually. That soundtrack really uh, gave a resurgence to a lot of those bands. Yeah, I like that movie. Yeah, great movie. I thought that would be too easy. Definitely check out Stone Age. I think you'll both enjoy it for all the wrong reasons. <laughs> I definitely will. All right, lastly, your girlfriend or wife has an appointment with a gynecologist. She has a choice between two doctors, Dr. Fuck or Dr. <laughs> Love. <laughs> <laughs> what doctor would you recommend to her? I think I already know Ralph's answer. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I would say Dr. Fuck because we know he's not into women. Yeah, good. <laughs> good answer. Good answer. Good answer, Mr. Bradley. Yeah. He's into Vinnie Vincent. Yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you something. What's bring, your bring your wife and I'll show you how I'm into women. Uh, I know that's a touchy subject. I'm sorry, Michael. <laughs> You just love left it. that one open for me. I would pick me because I love the vagina. Well, there you go. Dr. Fuck has spoke, gentlemen. He, lo- he especially loves his own. <laughs> hey, his hey, own no, vagina. Actually, actually, I'm more into Vinny's vagina. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Shockwave Skull Sessions listeners, send in those emails. Who wins this contest, Michael Branfold or Dr. Fuck, a.k.a. Ralph What, what do we win? I have nothing. Status, dude. Status. status. Internet status. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, you're a mar- marketing genius, right? Or should I say marketeer? Is that is that a st- word? St- st- status. If if I want status, I'll just make it up and give it to myself and brag about it. <laughs> I, I got I got a great prize if you don't mind. I, um, if I win, uh, three sides of the coin leaves the fucking internet. No more three sides. <laughs> of the coin. Oh. <laughs> And if you lose... Hey, this, sounds, this sounds familiar, Ralph. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm going to destroy you. <laughs> uh, take the three sides challenge. Yeah, I'm take the gonna... three sides challenge and vote for me. <laughs> and then when that didn't work, take the, the, the Dr. Fuck challenge and let's yeah. destroy him. And when that didn't work, you just go away. <laughs> exactly. You vanish and you, uh, you eat yourself to death. Well, speaking, uh, go ahead. Sorry, sorry, Bob. That was a big inside joke that not a lot of people are going to get. <laughs> oh, yeah. We'll tell you. We'll tell you off the air because he would love for us to say it on the oh, air. God, yes. <laughs> I would. But, but let me just say, you know, Bob, and I've said this to you before Bob is my main inspiration to start a podcast because, Bob, you would remember way back in. Like in the early days of Shockwaves, I uh, sent you one of my CDs. I recall that, yes. And you yeah. and you actually plugged it on the air, and I would listen to you, and I was so excited that you came back. And it was because of you, because of Shockwaves, I was like, uh, man, I want to start a podcast. I want to do something like this. Because you got to remember, when you were doing it, it wasn't popular to have a podcast. It was you know? pretty fresh. Are you, yeah, are you was- taking notes on this, Mr. Brandvold? <laughs> no i had a different influence i'm sure it had to do something with gene simmons vagina i mean gene no, no, simmons no. Tr- truthfully you know who it was who was michael it? butler in the rock and roll yeah. show well i will say he was one of the first that i heard him and talking metal i started the shockways hard radio podcast i think around 2004 Five, something like that and uh, I didn't know what podcasting was and then I looked into it and they were like about the only two metal podcasts I think there was another one or two others but I remember listening to both those I mean the rock and roll geek show has got to be close <laughs> to a thousand episodes yeah I think he was one of the originals actually yeah he was actually I, I, I bought a podcasting book way back then and he was actually featured in the book him and Adam Carolla yep. and Adam the MTV dude who's Adam Kerr uh, was Adam, it Adam Curry. Curry? Yep. Yeah. Yep. And and yeah, I was I was shocked that and I go, I gotta check out this rock and roll geek show. And I've been a big fan. In fact, uh Michael Butler is in the uh 
a Bay Area Godfather's movie. As you know, he uh, at, yep. at one time was the basis for Exodus and also yes, Jet was. Boy as well. Yep. So Force and of Habit. American, American Heartbreak. That's that's true. Yeah. Uh, Michael Butler hates me. <laughs> oh, does he? <laughs> well, I, I don't know if he hates me anymore, but he hated me at one time and he hated my co-host. Last year at the Rock and Pod, Ian and I dressed up as Vinnie Vincent because uh, Vinnie Vincent, did, you know, screwed them over. And there was a part where, because Ian wore a dress. I didn't go that far. And when Michael Butler was on the air, he said, oh, look at that guy. Somebody made, and this is so horrible, somebody made a Twitter account called Michael Butthurt. <laughs> and that person, who I, I won't name his name, but that person started putting up videos of me on there. So, of course, he thought I was the one that made that Twitter account. So when Michael uh, saw Ian in the dress, he goes, oh, there's that guy that made that Twitter account about me. He got me confused with Ian. And then he said, I can take him. I can kick his ass. So then when I, uh, I, I heard that, I wrote him saying, look, number one, this is the person that made that Twitter account. It wasn't me. So then he said to me, all right, man, hey, can we be friends and squash all this? I go, yeah, fine. So then I went to Ian and told him, look, you know, he said, let's be friends. And Ian's like, fuck him. <laughs> so, so was I, he, I don't. Was, was Ian drunk? Uh, I have never seen Ian sober. <laughs> <You know>? <laughs> <laughs> well, seriously, Ian, drink, Ian wakes up and starts drinking. I kid you not. <laughs> I don't know this guy, Ian. Is he? Uh, he brushes his teeth with vodka. <laughs> he's the guy. He's my co-host on Rock and Metal Combat podcast, where we would love to have you on, Bob. Oh, okay. I, you, you got. You got to go on. It is hilarious trying to hold a conversation with Ian. <laughs> okay, I, I I think I know who he is because I heard the uh, you did the Armored Saint symbol of salvation and sabotage yes. a couple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're good friends with John Bush, right? Oh yeah, yeah. John is come awesome. on the show with him, man. <laughs> you know, you know, Bob. When I started the Vieira Vault, I said at the I would say at the end, I want to sign a petition where I get either Rob Halford or John Bush on my on my show because those two are like. I know so much about Armored Saint. I am like such an Armored Saint nut swinger. I am fanatical. I flew to San Jose to see the reunion at Revelations Tour in 2000. And uh, I- I'm just a, a fanatic. Well, I'm um, sure he would. He would uh, he's very open to coming on podcast. Probably if he has something to promote when they are, they are working on a new record. I'm actually going to see him next week opening for UFO. They're going to. I'm not going on the cruise, uh, the mega cruise, but they're doing like the pre party. Uh, I think October, what is it, uh, 12th or something, uh, at, at the, uh, old palace, the Avalon in LA. So, uh, yeah, I'll be seeing that. Yeah. You it's know what? Awesome. Just hit him up. I'm sure he would, he would love to be a host on, well, he, guest he's, on the he, show. He's, he's not easy to find though. Is he on Facebook? I don't think he's on No, he, he doesn't do any social media. You know what? I'll, I'll put the word out to him, but well, I think it's, you. he does his, uh, you know, he, he goes by what metal blade, the public, you know, when. When, when they're preparing for new interviews for the new record, uh, I'm sure he'll be available. So I'll definitely let you know. And he knows who I am. I mean, it, he used to know my name. Dude, uh, everybody was... knows who you are. Come on. Dr. Fuck. <laughs> well, well, you know, he, he, at one point he said, hey, look, it's Ralph from Miami. He remembered me. But then I didn't see him for so many years. So they came down here with Queensryche. Right. And I saw him and he goes, Hey, like he didn't remember my name. He's like, Hey, I go, man, at one time you knew my name, you know, but he is such a great, great guy. So what a, what a great dude to meet. Oh, He's total dude. class. And one of my favorite singers of all time. And boy, do I, I know everything about John Bush. Yeah. Know? All the guys in armored Saint are great. Him, Joey. I'm the whole band. Oh, Gonzo. Phil. Yeah. Joey, Joey is amazing too. Yeah. Yeah. And Phil and Gonzo, they're all great. Jeff Duncan. Yeah. absolutely. Uh, Jeff Duncan symbol of salvation tour that when they played down here, uh, we got there very early. Jeff Duncan hung out with us for four hours. And it was funny because I was with my friend. And then Jeff Duncan goes, hey, I'll be right back. And then when he went inside, my friend said, man, I was wondering when he was going to leave. <laughs> well, that's because Jeff Duncan has no friends. No, I just. Uh, Jeff Duncan. Jeff is gone. a nice dude. Yeah, yeah really I told cool my dude. friend, fuck you, man. That's Jeff Duncan, man. <laughs> Jeff Duncan from Odin? <laughs> yeah, Odin. Exactly. Odin. That's, All right, that's, I mean, you know, you know, Bob about Odin, man. That's a bad representation because that EP was awesome. I By wouldn't that, go so far as say it's awesome, but it did. It was better than I think. What I mean, Randy O was awful. I will. I never was a fan of him. Really, but his guitar. I mean, Jeff wrote some killer guitar riffs, even on oh. that album. The writer and other stuff. He was. Uh, 
uh, him and Sean both. Uh, I always thought were talented. I saw them yeah. live uh, quite a few times. Odin way I back saw them once. Yeah, I saw them once because I was in California. I saw them at the Country Club with a band, obscure band that I've been looking for ever since, called Stone Soldier. Oh Remember yeah, that? yeah, I know those I guys really that. well. Jim McDonald and uh, what's the other? Uh, Ah, I can't remember the other guy's name, but uh, yeah, they were um, uh, they were a pretty big band, Pasadena band for a while. They did a lot of shows with Armored Saint as well. They were in that kind of group, and uh, yeah, they just kind of disappeared. <coughs> Them and Heretic and uh, uh, a couple other bands, Abattoir, they all did shows together. Yeah, Stone Heretic Soldier. with uh, the guy from uh, Metal Church. Uh, yeah, well, they, that that was when they were Reverend. They changed. Mm. They had David Wayne. Uh, oh right. no, but they did have Mike Howe. I think. Yeah, Didn't Mike Howe yeah. was on Breaking Point. That right, album. right. I have, I have that album, yeah. Right, right. Good stuff. Exactly. Yeah, they were a metal play band. Another great band. So speaking of Vinnie Vincent, who's going, <laughs> who's doing the Christmas party with Vinnie? Either of you? <laughs> yeah. Either of you yeah, working right. out those big I'm, dollars? I'm, I'm, I'm sure there's, there's probably a big uh, photo of each of us at the front door with an X through it saying, don't yeah. let these pulls in. Hey, that, that's a good question for Vinny. Which one, which one do you want to die for us to die first? Me or Michael, Vinny? Well, has he actually personally contacted you or his lawyer? You know what? I, I made, I made, I'll tell you this off the air. I made a vow never to talk about him again, but I will tell you something. And Michael, you are going to laugh. It sounds like a legal uh, dispute. Something that happened really funny, but I can't talk about it on the air. But you guys got to hear this story. It's hysterical. I'm dying. Let's just say he knows who I am. And uh, Michael, what's your relationship with the Vinster? He um he named he named my quote fan club the Brandvold Ill. He created it. <laughs> so I don't know about five six years ago, we were doing three sides, and we were chatting with somebody on Facebook who was one of these fans. Vinny loves to have fans work for him. Of course. And free. this fan had been trying to do something with him. And I don't remember what it was, like sell T-shirts or a website or something like that. And this fan is like, yeah, Vinny. Well, I should say it wasn't Vinny. It came from Meredith, which yeah. is his fake, his fake assistant's name. Right. Mer- Meredith sent me an email saying, you're not part of Branvold in that ilk, are you? Because this is when Three Sides of the Coin, we had we had all sorts of guests on who had worked with Vinny, whether it was musicians or promoters. And Vinny hated us because of what they were saying. Of course. So we got called the ilk. <laughs> well, that's... So Vin, Vin, Vinny, Vinny knows very well who I am and Three Sides is. And let's just say when we recently had... Bobby Rock on, I don't know, within the last year, we got we got a new message from the new fan who was working with Vinny. Which is Bobby Vinny. Uh, Vin, Vinny has hit the delete key on you guys. <laughs> well, that just shows how much of an influence you are on Vinny Vincent. Like, really? He actually listens to every you episode. You didn't, like, you didn't like what Bobby Rock had to say, <laughs> so you hit the delete key on us. As that showed to, you guys. Know, may, 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 maybe you should have, like, I don't picked up the phone and said, let me come on and tell my side of the story. Well, I was going to ask you, have you invited him on? Uh, or have well, you we have that tried invitation? in the last, since 2018. I know, I know how you get, get him on, uh, Michael. All you have to do is call that guy Bitch Lafon. He'll give you some pointers <laughs> how to kiss his ass. Well, he was on Eddie Trunk. or what, Yeah, but, oh. but, but he, he wrote off Eddie Trunk as well. Because Eddie Trunk also had Bobby Rock on. I actually was very impressed. I heard the podcast that Eddie Trunk uh, came on uh, when he came on Three Sides of the Coin with you, Mark, and Tommy, and you guys were real hard on him, but he um, he was a trooper on that. I, I, I will give cred to Eddie Trunk on that. Listen, I, w- I say this all the time. I totally respect Eddie because he's got his own opinions. I may not agree with them, but that doesn't matter. He's got his own opinions. He believes in him. He stands behind him. Good for him. He doesn't let a bunch of nut job fans sway what he thinks. Then why don't you respect me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Michael. If, answer if that all, one. Ralph, if only the fans really knew, their heads hey. would just be exploding. Edit that part out, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I want to know this, Michael. Since uh, Kiss have been selling out everywhere... What is the real reason they canceled the show here in Oakland last week? Um, 
I suspect, I, and I don't know this to be a fact, but I suspect it was related to whatever Gene's medical procedure was. Okay, because the rumor is it was about poor ticket sales, and they're making well because that. so they they postponed Oakland and L.A. Right, and then within the next week, the show right before Oakland, which was Salt Lake City, got postponed at the last minute with Gene sending out a tweet saying. We'll get this rescheduled. I have to return to L.A. for a quick medical procedure. Nothing to worry about. So I suspect whatever that medical procedure was had to happen a day or two earlier than they planned. And that was all it was. Okay. I, I, I heard uh, the reason they canceled was because the tape machine broke. Good answer, Ralph. Nobody uses tape. Woo. Yeah, It's all digital these days, don't you know? Yeah, nobody uh, used cassette tapes. That's not what I heard. You know what? I I think I think there's more truth to Ralph's answer than yours, Michael. Sorry <laughs> okay. about that. <laughs> Michael can't say that. He got to get those checks. I got to get paid. Uh, well, you know, Kisses. Uh, I guess uh, was announced their headline in the Download Festival over Iron Maiden, which kind of I don't know if it's like a co headline. I don't know if it's over. I think they're on or, a different day. I think Kisses Friday. Iron oh, Maiden is Saturday. I thought it was a one-day event because there's not too many bands on. I know System of a Down, Corn, Disturbed. I think there was only at least what I saw, maybe seven or eight bands listed. Deftones. I'm sure that's probably just their first round of announcements, though. Right. Okay. Download is more than one day, I believe, right? Yeah, it's three days. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah so. I guess it is nowadays. All right. I, I thought it was only one day because they only <laughs> announced a few bands. Well, we'll see uh, We'll see how that one goes if uh, Gene cancels that as well. Hopefully, they'll get the tape machine fixed by then. <laughs> <laughs> the digital. The machine. digital. I'm sorry. The digital <laughs> They'll machine. recharge the batteries on the iPod. <laughs> there you go. All right. Did you want to actually talk Molly Hatchet? I know that was... Uh, a subject that, that 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 was more of a a rub between Ralph and I about about me being on yeah. rock and metal podcast and we we he invited me on I picked Molly Hatchet Ralph and I are huge Molly Hatchet fans let's put the original Molly Hatchet fans the thing that's happening now no right yeah. but it was just hilarious and you got to listen to it go 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 I'm find it yeah I, I, I saw that episode Ian, Ian was just cracking us up yeah <laughs> Molly Hatchet is a third rate has been wannabe skinnered they've got a wannabe Sammy Hagar lead singer <laughs> he was just Yo. When you hear it, Bob, you'll just hear uh, you know him saying it once or twice. But believe me, he did it like five hundred times. I edited the hell out of that show because every time we would review a song, it was the same damn review. He gave the same review. <laughs> <laughs> These guys are terrible. It's horrible. <laughs> well, it's funny how those southern rock bands are still going without hardly any like Skinner. I, do they even have any original? One guy they, left, they, I think. One guy, Rossington, and then of and course Blackfoot. <laughs> Uh, Ricky Medlock formed his own young version of Blackfoot, yeah. which I think and, is pretty hilarious. And funny yeah. enough, if you want to get technical, Ricky Medlock was the original drummer in Leonard Skinner, but he didn't record. He That's did true. record I with him, that. but he wasn't on Pronouns, right, the first right. album. So they kind, technically, they got two people up there. But I, to me, I mean, I don't know if you guys agree. I always look at, man, a real band, a real lineup is who played on the first album. I mean, I think Mustaine would only be the, the exception because he wrote so many songs. But, you know, you know, there was a guitar player before Joe Perry. Who cares? You know what I mean? Well, he didn't record. Well, they had, uh, um, uh, what's the name? Dick Wagner did a lot of the solos on the records. He did uh, uh, Train Kept the Rolling. Train Kept the Rolling. He did a lot on yeah. Get Your Wings. But I think Joe was always in the band. Yeah, no, Joe played on the first album. But before, no, before uh, the first album, they did have a guitar player before Joe Perry. Yeah, and, I don't and, count that either. I mean, you could say the same with, uh, you know, Judas Priest with Al, Al, Atkins, Al or, Atkins. I mean, Iron Maiden had like 20 different lineups Thunder, before. Thunder Sticks. Yeah. Rob yeah Samson was yeah. In, in Iron Maiden. Yeah. Every, I mean, they had uh, uh, the singer for that band more, Paul Mario Day. They had like three singers before Paul Diano joined. Uh, they yeah. were around since 74. So, yeah. Uh, no, and, and, and and my band, Michael Branville, played the skin flute before the first I heard album. about that. And I <laughs> yeah, yeah. heard he so, was such uh, a great player that he... Uh... He was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> he was the best skin flute player ever. Uh, what, wait, what, what was that? I, I think I just heard a tissue being pulled. Michael, are, you, are you okay there, Michael? <laughs> oh, my God. 
It hurts so much. <laughs> okay. My, well, my feelings are being hurt. I'm lost for words. Uh, there was something I want I want to bring up. I was listening to a podcast uh, recently. I mean, I guess the podcast has been around for a while, but the Rhino podcast, the Rhino Records podcast. Have you heard that? Uh, I have heard it, but I haven't heard it in a while. But I remember hearing it. Yes. Yeah, they do. You know, they have a lot of the guests that, that do the box sets on there. They had a great one with two parter with Ian Anderson. They had one with David Coverdale, but they had a really cool one about Cream Magazine. I know both you guys are old school. You both remember Cream and Magazine. Mike, and yep. Michael had a person from Cream on his show. Oh, well, that was was yeah, that the that was son? A good show. We had Jan. Jan, not Jan Werner. No, you helped Rolling Stone. Okay, I was going to yeah. say, okay. I would slap you. And I'd like to say something real quick about Rhino. Everybody out there, get the Rhino versions of the Black, Black Sabbath 180 gram vinyls, because there are NEMS versions, and I, and I got paranoid on NEMS. And paranoia on NEMS compared to the Rhino version sucks. They All the NEMS shit out- sucks, I thought. It was like yeah. a bootleg company, wasn't it? Out of England, it was like it, no, kind of a- it was it was it was a legitimate company that Black Sabbath Black Sabbath was notoriously ripped off. In yeah, movie. yeah, Don Arden had so, all these different. Yeah, yeah so they well. got the rights of a lot of those albums. Just kept releasing you know, compilations and crap. But Rhino did such an exceptional job on all the '70s Sabbath 180 grams and. Brings everything original, like Master of Reality brings the original poster, and the sound is impeccable. So a plug for Rhino. Go with Rhino Records. If you want to get any of the early Sabbath vinyls on 180 gram, go with Rhino Records, and you will not regret it. I think that goes for all their releases. Rhino always does a great job in repackaging and remastering a lot of the uh, classics, whether it be box sets or uh, vinyl or, or, or whatever. They, they do it right. Yeah, I, I know I have a couple other Rhino uh, releases, but I just for the life of me can't remember. And I'm like, you know, I'm the biggest Black Sabbath fan there is. So, you know, of course, I'm going to just remember that, you know. All right, he's back. I okay, I, I'm back. I'm sorry about that. I had a, uh, what, my did phone. Did you need to go get a tissue? Did I, 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 you did. I'm sorry. <laughs> but I needed to get a tissue for another uh, reason. I had to do it, take a quick uh, jerk off session there after hearing uh, all that talk about Vinnie Vincent it got me all excited you just needed a good hug right that's exactly right Michael. I think he just got pissed and I said Sabbath was better than Kiss oh I wouldn't believe me dude I would applaud you for that a hundred times over but instead you ran away quietly sulking <laughs> you guys caught me but actually that there's that uh, documentary coming out about cream, uh, cream I guess they're doing a couple uh, yep screenings and uh, it's the son of the owner that uh yep. put it together so that, that should be kind of interesting i'm dying to see that i want to buy an actual physical copy of it i do too i definitely want I, to see I don't i don't out. think they've got a release plan for it yet it's still doing the film show circuit type well of that's thing a smart right thing now. to do because you know when you do everyone asks me well why didn't you do any of the festivals with uh inside metal once you have a deal or a distributor which we did from the very beginning you can't do the festivals supposedly to do pretty much most of uh, the fest film festivals you can't have a uh, uh signed on to a uh, label and or distributor so to speak right so uh, i would i would i would believe that yeah and, and you know listen once you're signed on with a label and a distributor they want you to people to buy the product from them not go buy a movie ticket exactly exactly we which did. they don't share in any of that revenue i'm sure yeah well it depends upon the deal they made we did do a theater run with the first one pioneers of la hard rock and metal i think it went to like 50 theaters but we are going to do some screenings for uh the new uh bay area godfathers a couple here in the bay area maybe in sacramento and probably one in la as well so Oh, I'm dying to see that, Bob. Do you have any release date or is still not nothing? Uh, no, we're, we're, we're finishing up the editing. It, it'll actually, the, the um, DVD and digital will come out the beginning of the new year. Uh, you know, we were trying to push to get it out by the end of the year. Uh, but now it, it looks like, you know, probably January, February, we'll get it out. We're just right now really at the finishing stages of the movie, but we'll probably do a couple screenings before the new year ends. Awesome. Uh, uh, I got to say that you're, you're very lucky as far as promotion goes because of all the subscribers and views that I have. Uh, it'd be better if I promoted than Michael. <laughs> well, please do Ralph. 
<laughs> oh, you know Please I do. will, man. I'm gonna pimp that like crazy. All right. Well, Michael, I'm gonna is pimp a, it like it's it's the pimp. it's the only way people will ever hear Ralph's band. <laughs> oh, sure. That's a good one. That's a, that is a good one. Well, uh, uh, Michael is local, so he, I'll, I'll definitely have him come down to the uh, screening when we do out here. Hopefully. Love to. Well, what Hi, else Michael. can we discuss Hi, here? Uh, oh, I, I got some. It'll make it'll make Michael happy here. What 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 is it that you're doing with Leather Leon? I'm managing uh, leather. Oh, you're She's, managing. Wow. And, you know, he asked me to do a little write-up. And I went and I uh, discovered that she released an album last year called Leather 2. It's amazing. And I want to plug that because you got – this lady can scream. I mean, she's like a female I, – I can't say she sounds like Dio, but she's got a, an identifiable voice well, like she's, Dio. She's, you know, Dio is probably one of her biggest influences, yeah. so – there you go, and and I, and I love that lady. I, I've always loved her from the Chastain days, and uh, and I just wanted to plug. Uh, you guys got to hear Leather too. Check check out Leather Leone L E O N E dot com. A yeah, great singer, a- and she is also featured in the Bay Area Godfathers movie. So that gives you a reason to promote it, Mister Brandfold. Oh, of course. See, I played it smart. Uh, I got both yeah. the big major podcasters involved. Ralph with the Thrasher yeah. Die music and Michael with the uh, Leather Leon management. Well, so and, and, and you interviewed Jason Becker. Jason Becker. Of course, which is fantastic. That's Thank huge. you so much for uh, that. That's People are going to really love that. Those segments came out fantastic. Uh, uh, once again, that's how I use uh, use these guys to my advantage. You know, Why there, not? Once again, Ralph, we've been used. <laughs> yeah, so you'll get thousands and thousands of people plugged and Michael will probably get half a dozen. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're about an hour in here. I don't know if there's anything else you want to rave about. Why don't you guys uh, close this uh, episode here with, with uh, what you got. You, I, as you mentioned, Michael, you got your, uh, your marketing company. I didn't mm-hmm. actually realize you did management too i thought you were just doing the marketing I, for love I, i've never managed anybody before because i mean frankly most of the time it's like i don't want to deal with all the personal headaches that come from managing but i've known leather for nearly 10 years now she mm-hmm. she lives she lives in the same town i live over here what, and, what, uh, what was it that you did with accept and uh, vicious rumors i i just did marketing for them okay. tour marketing album marketing stuff like that that's what i do most of the time but Leather, um, again, I've known her and I've given her a lot of advice over the years. Her last manager just up and quit and screwed her over royally. And I was like, well, she wanted to know if I might be interested. And I said, you know what? Yeah, let's let's see what we can do here. I'll see what I can do Good to help you. you out. here. You know, it's funny, Ralph, you're plugging her album <laughs> Leather too. Sadly, nobody's going to be able to go find it on Spotify or iTunes right now because they're Frickin' other manager deleted her distribution account and removed it from all outlets on the internet. Even Amazon? Amazon, iTunes, Spotify, everywhere. It's what gone. A dick. So, so 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 we've got to re re-release it and upload it. So it's gonna be a few weeks before we can. You know, that's that probably out. better in the long run though, Michael. This way you have all oh, no, control and creative 100% control. Right, yeah. because he had controlled the account. Sure. So he was probably taking all the money from it absolutely that was coming in as well but of course he was yeah so she got royally screwed over by her manager had a tour in europe canceled by him so it's sort of like picking up the pieces i like her a lot she's on like you said ralph an amazing talent absolutely and still uh, has that voice still has the voice and all she wants to do is perform you know there's no ego here of i gotta perform to 5,000 people and I need to make boatloads. She just wants to get out there and play live music, man. That's right on. It. Yeah, she's great. Right on. Look forward to yeah, it. Yeah, she is great. Speaking of great, you know, Thrasher Die has 152,000 <laughs> 152, people on the Facebook page. We headline in front of 8,000 people in Columbia. We're in two movies from Trauma Pictures, Return of Newcomb High, Return of Newcomb High Part 2. And there's over half a dozen people with Thrasher Die tattoos. And they're going to be in another movie called Bay Area Godfathers. So I expect all you 150,000 Facebook followers to be streaming this movie on Amazon Prime when it comes out. Oh, yeah, or buying the DVD on from it, Amazon. Bob. 
I, but, I've heard about those 150,000 followers. <laughs> oh, <laughs> don't start with that crap. Are, are they all based in the Philippines or in somewhere yep. in Indonesia? <laughs> yep. That's not true. It's a liar. It's all legitimate, It's, it's man. one of those, huh? And speaking of uh, vicious rumors, we got to Jeff Thorpe throughout the movie as well. He's nice. a, a main feature in it. So we got all, it's not, I mean, a lot of people are thinking yep. it's all thrash, but we've got Blas Rocket, Vane, Jet Boy, Head On, and Roadrunner, the team and brothers. Of course, Y&T, Dave Medichetti, as you said, Jason Becker, Marty Friedman. So uh, it's going to have a, a full-fledged, over 50 musicians featured in this movie. Nice. Sounds Amazing. Awesome. And, and, and Bob, you're legendary, man. I mean, I, your history, you were at the right place at the right time. You, you're, you're tight. I mean, you know how cool it is to have Metallica like send you to their anniversary show because you knew them back before they were Metallica. Part of the scene. You're part of history, man. Well, thank and, you. Uh, thank you, Ralph. Are you taking notes, Michael? <laughs> uh, Ralph is doing an awful lot of kissing up for not getting paid to have his music in the movie. Hey, well, that's not. Ooh. No, that's, well, well, we you won't need a manager, that. Ralph. You need a manager. Yeah, hire Michael Brandvold. He could Are get you. you nuts? He could get you thirty cents a play. <laughs> We won't discuss what I got paid for the movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mr. Brand, I didn't get paid, Mr. Branwell. We know you didn't get paid. That's true. <laughs> yeah, but the exposure he's going to get from this is going to be right. overwhelming. Exactly. Thrash or Die him, will be the make him biggest huge. fan it's in the give world. Him two more subscribers. That's yeah, right. We're going to have 152,002 people on our Facebook page. <laughs> Pretty soon, Metallica will be opening up for Thrash or Die. Well, that's, that's, the that's, that goes without saying. Uh, but seriously, man, great, thank you again for allowing us to uh, do the music because it just fits perfect with this time and era and really works in good with uh, with all the narration segments that uh, my buddy John Stranansky narrated, who was a staple of the uh, Bay Area metal scene from the early 80s. So uh, definitely be on the lookout for that movie. And definitely is uh, Leather putting out a new record. Um, new she's. Art. She's working on new material now. She's starting to write new songs now. So, you know, probably next year. All right. And she's got, like, different different bands that she uses? or is that No, she's got a core group of guys okay. from South America that she works That's with. That's right. I remember South. So does she have to fly them back and forth, or, or does she just use them when, when she goes to South America? Well, you know, when, when for recording, you know, that's that's all done remotely with wherever people are. When it comes time for shows, yeah, she's either she flies down to South America or they will come to wherever she is for shows. So, all right, well, Doctor Fuck. Uh, beside the big news about Thrush or Die being in the new upcoming Inside Metal movie, yeah. what else you got going on? Uh, we are working on new material. Uh, we're about halfway done. It's taken us a very long time because I, I refuse to re, uh, release anything if it's not at least as good as our last record. Uh, which is now on third pressing, Michael, and out of print. The, what? The, what, what the f- how many did you press? Five <laughs> copies of pressing? A no, thousand. they dubbed it from tape recorder. You know those old <laughs> dual cassette decks? Hey, now I don't like you, Oh, oh, oh I'm sorry. Uh, no, I mean, they, they did 500,000 uh, pressings. Your history. <laughs> Ralph is getting out of Kleenex. That's all right. I, I already got you on tape saying that I'm a legend, so. Yeah, that's cool. Just just edit that part out. But, uh, no, but you know what? Look, <clears throat> yeah, the, the band's working on material. My uh, And also plug my Rock and Metal Combat podcast. Uh, and I also want to say, man, it is truly an honor to to be on Skull Session, because this is what what inspired me. You, you inspired me a lot. It's just a damn shame I had to share it with this idiot. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad I got you both on together, because uh, I love you. I mean, I love both your podcasts, but when you two are on together, or just when Michael's talking about you on three sides, it just kind of created and I love the animosity and how some people take it serious and all your fans are writing in and the hatred toward Dr. Fuck and some of the love toward Dr. Fuck and uh, I love it, man. Keep, you know, keep it, it going. It, it's, a, it's an absolute blast and <laughs> You know, Ralph and I just sit back behind the scenes quietly and just laugh our asses off as we see you what's know, going on here. Michael Michael recently uh, took out a little part of our last podcast on my podcast 
that I didn't air where I say very nice things about Michael. <clears throat> well, Michael, I didn't tell you this. Somebody posted it in the Almost Human page, which I refuse to have Michael in. And uh, <laughs> somebody's saying, oh, look, Ralph, he edited it. You know, they thought they thought you edited it in a way where it made me look like like I didn't really say it. Right. <laughs> but I said I meant every word. And this guy wrote a paragraph about you. I uh. mean, this guy is so hated. And then when he was done <clears throat> saying it, I said, I don't give a fuck. He's my friend. I don't care. And I go, if anybody doesn't like it, you can leave. I don't care. You know, it's like, you know, there's a lot of people that like bash me because I'm friends with this dude. It, it's ridiculous. It's like, dude, it's uh, he talks about four grown men in makeup, you know, and you're going to get all butthurt about, <laughs> oh, he, he treats the fans like crap and he says horrible things to them. How can you be friends with him? I'm like, I'm not one of those fans that he treats like crap. Kiss he fans are stupid, right? They are. They are. <laughs> As I say, now Michael is really breaking out the tissue, but not because he's been embarrassed, but because he's been so emotionally loved by Ralph here. Yeah. He Go ahead. Gone. Cry it out. Cry it out there, Michael. Ralph, 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 Ralph dreams that. about me. <laughs> I dream about you keeping me fired, pal. <laughs> The love I'll you be guys back on no, three sides. It, it, you it's watch. all about marketing and promotion, gentlemen. <laughs> Absolutely, and you are the marketing <laughs> genius. So, any band out there that want to get their uh, music marketed uh, in social media and all the right places, contact Michael Brandvold Marketing. What what's yeah. your uh, email or your hit, main hit, contact? hit me up at michaelbrandvold dot com. I want to I want to say to my band members. Don't you dare hit up Michael. <laughs> <laughs> so, Ralph, the, the best place for them, for people to contact you. Oh, I'm on Facebook, Ralph Vieira. I guess that's the only place, really, you know, because uh, I don't want to give people my email. <laughs> there you go. No, that's not true. I thrash mean, or but, die. Yeah, thrash or die. Oh, we got a Facebook page. Join it. We have a website, too. There's a website. There's a thrash or die dot com. You can get merch there. Be on the lookout, man. Maybe by 2035, the next 30 Trash or Die album, man. All right. It's going to be worth the wait. There you go. Gentlemen, it was an absolute pleasure having you both on together. We will do it again very soon. And look forward to uh, all your future podcasts. And I'm going to definitely check out this uh, Molly Hatchet episode you speak so highly about. <laughs> yeah. And please have me back on without this idiot. Uh, will do. <laughs> And I'll, I'll gladly be on your rock and metal podcast as well. Yes, I, we're, I will we're hit up John right Bush, there. too. When they got uh, something new to promote, I'm sure he'd be more than happy to be on your show. And it'd be great to have you with him. You I know? would love to. Yeah, that would be that, fantastic. You know, that, that'd be great. But we'll have you on before that. Sounds good, gentlemen. Once again, you guys have a great rest of the week, and we will chat soon. Thanks, Bob. All right, guys. Yes, thank Take you, care. Bob.